What does the great Seth reveal about our divine purpose and the role of the material world? Understanding these teachings can help you unlock the true potential of your inner divine spark, guiding you towards spiritual freedom. The second treatise of the Great Seth isn't just an ancient text, it's a guide to understanding the cosmic roles of the Demiurge and Archons. Their challenges aren't meant to imprison us, but to awaken our soul to its higher purpose. You're about to discover how this Gnostic wisdom applies to your life today. What if the struggles we face every day are designed not to limit us, but to help us grow spiritually? The second treatise of the Great Seth offers deep Gnostic insights into the divine plan. But what is this plan, and how does it connect to our spiritual journey? Let's dive in and find out how this all fits with intuitive Gnosticism. Heavenly Father, true God of all love and light, we ask for your wisdom today as we seek understanding. Help us to open our hearts and minds to the divine spark within, guiding us back to the pleroma and eternal unity with you. Amen. The Second Treatise of the Great Seth The Second Treatise of the Great Seth is a powerful Gnostic text that presents a first-person account from the perspective of the divine figure known as the Great Seth. This paraphrase aligns with intuitive Gnosticism, presenting the spiritual insights and cosmic roles of the Demiurge, Yahweh, and the Archons in a positive light. The text is delivered by the Great Seth, a divine figure who represents the higher self or the divine spark within each individual. Seth reveals that the true God, who is beyond all comprehension, is the source of all light, love, and wisdom. From this divine source emanate the eons who reside in the Pleroma, the realm of divine fullness. Seth speaks of the unity and harmony within the Pleroma, where the eons reflect the different aspects of the true God. These divine beings work together to maintain the balance of the spiritual realms, ensuring that the divine order is preserved. Seth explains that the material world was created by the Demiurge, Yahweh, who believed himself to be the supreme creator. Although Yahweh was unaware of his origin within the Pleroma, his creation of the material world was not an act of evil, but a necessary part of the divine plan. The material world serves as a place where souls can experience growth, learn valuable lessons, and eventually return to the divine source. Yahweh's actions are guided by a sense of justice and order, which are essential for maintaining the structure of the physical realm. His creation provides the framework within which souls can evolve and develop their understanding of the divine. Seth describes the Archons as beings created by Yahweh to govern the material world. Each Archon is given dominion over a specific aspect of creation, such as the stars, the earth, or the forces of nature. While the Archons are often perceived as oppressive rulers, they are, in fact, necessary agents of the divine order. The challenges and obstacles imposed by the Archons are intended to awaken the divine spark within souls, pushing them to seek gnosis and transcend the limitations of the material world. The Archon's role is to maintain the balance of the physical realm, ensuring that it serves as a schoolroom for spiritual development. Seth explains that Yahweh, the Demiurge, is often misunderstood by those who do not recognize his role in the divine plan. While Yahweh's creation of the material world is imperfect, it is an essential part of the soul's journey toward enlightenment. Yahweh's strict enforcement of cosmic law provides the necessary conditions for souls to learn, grow, and ultimately return to the Pleroma. Yahweh's actions are not motivated by malice, but by a desire to maintain order and justice. By understanding Yahweh's role, individuals can overcome the misconceptions that bind them to the material world and seek the knowledge that will lead them to spiritual liberation. Seth emphasizes the importance of gnosis, direct knowledge of the soul's divine origin, as the path to liberation. By recognizing the divine spark within, individuals can overcome the influence of the archons and the limitations of the material world. This awakening allows souls to reconnect with the true God and return to the Pleroma. The journey to liberation involves self-knowledge, spiritual practice, and the pursuit of truth. As souls awaken to their true nature, they begin the process of returning to the Pleroma, where they will experience unity with the Divine Source. Seth concludes by affirming the ultimate triumph of the Divine Spark within each soul. Despite the challenges posed by the material world and the Archons, the Divine Spark cannot be extinguished. It is a reflection of the true God, and through it, all souls have the potential to return to the Pleroma. 
The material world, while challenging, is not to be feared but understood as a necessary part of the soul's journey. By embracing Gnosis and recognizing the divine spark within, souls can achieve spiritual liberation and reunite with the true God. In the second treatise of the Great Seth, Seth speaks directly to us, describing the journey of the soul and its divine origin. The material world, often viewed as a place of suffering, is actually a crucial step in our spiritual development. It was created by the Demiurge, Yahweh, who, while often misunderstood, plays a vital role in the divine order. Yahweh believed he was the supreme creator, yet his actions were part of a grander, divine plan. He, along with the Archons, sets up challenges in the physical world not to harm us, but to provide the structure we need to grow. These tests push us to discover the spark of divinity within and seek Gnosis, the direct knowledge of the true God. The Archons, who govern various aspects of the material world, are not evil. Their job is to maintain order, creating the obstacles we must transcend. These challenges are meant to awaken us. The path to freedom is not through avoidance but through overcoming. Gnosis leads to spiritual liberation and the Great Seth teaches us how to achieve this. Today, we've learned that even the most challenging aspects of life, the struggles, the obstacles, are part of a divine plan. The Great Seth shows us that these challenges are tools for awakening our inner divine spark and ultimately returning to the true God. If you felt inspired by today's message, hit that subscribe button and join our journey of spiritual discovery. Let's awaken together. Lord, we thank you for the knowledge shared today. May we continue to grow, overcoming every obstacle with the light of your love in our hearts. Help us to awaken fully to our divine nature and return to unity with you. Amen. Hey everybody, we've got something really exciting coming your way. From September 18th to October 15th, we're diving deep into the heart of intuitive Gnosticism with a special, can't-miss series. Every day, we'll be reading a chapter from my new book, Intuitive Gnosticism, as part of our daily series Intuitive Gnosticism today. But that's not all. We're also launching a special daily edition of Let's Choose Jesus, where each sermon will be inspired by a chapter from the book, that's right, daily sermons for the launch instead of our usual weekly schedule. And it gets better. Our Nag Hammadi Library series continues with paraphrased teachings from the ancient Gnostic scriptures, plus we'll be dropping video readings of our brand new modern translation of the Nag Hammadi texts. But wait, there's more. As we gear up for the official launch, we'll be releasing some amazing extras, a gospel album, a rock opera based on intuitive Gnosticism, a workbook companion, and even a book version of the Nag Hammadi paraphrases. And trust me, that's just the beginning. There's tons of free content coming your way. This is going to be a season of powerful transformation, and we want you with us every step of the way. Don't miss this chance to see how God can change lives, including yours.